شباب الان ذا ذا سكند ستيب سكند ستيب اند لاست اكسبيريمنتال ستيب ثيوريتيكلي وي هاف ذير ار ثري ستيبس بس اكسبيريمنتالي ذيس از ذا لاست ستيب واي اي اكسبلين واي In this step, what I'll do, I repeat everything in step number one. I repeat the procedure, same everything, but this time I replace water by diluted HCl. Here we have diluted HCl. It's 0.5 molar. The concentration is very low, 0.5 molar. So again, I measure. I will try my best to measure the same mass in part number one. This mass should be the same. Why the same? We we'll explain that during the experimental, during the critical part. Okay, so I try to take one point nine seven grams. Okay. I think we need one more or. One point nine seven. So, okay. Now I use this powdered sodium hydroxide just to adjust the mass to control the mass because. Okay. Yes, a little bit more. In the last step, we'll subtract the heat from part number two from the heat from part number one. This is why the mass should be perfectly the same. That's it. Yalla, take it and record it. Just a few seconds. Yeah, it's 1.97 or 1.98. This small piece. It's 1.977. The third decimal place is not important. Okay, as I said, now we record the initial temperature of HCl this time. Instead of water, I use HCl. So again, I measure 100 milliliter of HCl. Yeah, it's 100 milliliter. Okay, initial temperature again, I close calorimeter and I record the initial temperature. Yeah, it's a 24 point Seven degrees Celsius, twenty-four point seven. Again, I'll drop sodium hydroxide inside calorimeter, and I repeat the previous procedure. Immediately, I close it to trap the heat inside it. Okay, and we repeat everything. I'll try to close it by my finger. And every 30 seconds, we take the temperature. This process is a chemical process. The first process was physical, it's just dissolving solute with solvent, while here, a chemical reaction will take place inside the calorimeter because we added sodium hydroxide and diluted HCl. HCl is an acid, sodium hydroxide is a base, so they react with each other. And any base reaction, by the way, any acid base reaction is exothermic process. What do you expect? The difference in temperature of this part will be higher or lower than the previous part. Yeah. Think about the answer. Now we will check by our... Experimentally, we will check that. But I want you to, th to think now whether the temperature or the difference in temperature will be higher or lower. 
이렇게 Okay. Yeah, let's record the initial temperature. I think we need to repeat this step three or four times until now the temperature is 28.4 or 0.5.6 degrees. So I think from the first attempt you concluded or you got the answer of my question. Okay, let's continue. Check now. Yeah, it's thirty one point eight, thirty two, thirty two point one, thirty two point zero. So let's do it for for one more trial. يلا مشوا لنا يا شباب نكب شوي اوكي okay. I'll check the temperature now in the previous trial it was 32.0 now we'll check whether it's more or less yeah it's 33.0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So we still we didn't reach the maximum temperature yet. So we will continue. Almost. Thirty four point three. Okay, last the trial, just I'll do it one more time. This is thirty four point three, just to make sure that we uh, we did it accurately. the last time yeah it's almost stable it's a 34 point point five yeah take it and record it that's it this is the final temperature it's 34 point five degrees Celsius so in short what we did we perform two steps. In the first, in the first step, we prepared a sodium hydroxide solution, which is an exothermic, and we measured the heat released by the solution. This is why we call it delta H solution. In the second step, we carried out a reaction between acid and base, sodium hydroxide and HCl diluted solution. They reacted with each other to release a heat. This heat is called delta H reaction. When we subtract now delta H reaction minus delta H solution, we will get delta H neutralization. Why? We'll explain all details regarding this point, inshallah, in the class. Thank you very much.